So a lot of people ask, um, what is the SSI stiffness on our shafts? And um, I tried to come up with a numerical value for the shaft stiffness, uh, not the softness, but the stiffness. Because um, the, uh, the bigger blades uh, are generally bought by guys that are taller, a little stronger, and they need, uh, therefore, a stiffer shaft. So, and the people buying smaller blades were generally smaller people, um, shorter, not putting as much load on the blade, and the blade is smaller. Like imagine you're a small person and you got a blade that's this size, you're not gonna deflect the shaft as much when you put your full you know, energy into the stroke. Or if you had, say, a, a bigger blade this size, you may need you know, a stiffer shaft to, to take the load of a bigger guy pulling on a bigger blade. So that being said, we, we started making blade areas for our blades. So instead of the width, um, we calculate the blade area in square inches, so 90, 100, 110. For example, in our Kanaha model, 83 and 92 in our fly series, which is the flyweight and the superfly. So, that being said, um, I wanted a number that was completely different than the blade size so it wouldn't be confused with the 90, 100, 110. So I was trying to target a number that would be you know, roughly half or less on that number to represent the stiffness of the shaft. So this is how Jimmy came up with his little stiffness system. This, the number represents the bridge um, when you put a load, a set load on the shaft. So I picked a load which was my body weight so that I could do this test like anywhere in a race. Somebody says, oh, I like this paddle, like, can you make this uh, stiffness of this shaft um, in this blade? So for me to figure out what stiffness it is, I can just go over to the picnic table, put a couple of three quarter inch blocks from my toolbox on the table, put my body weight, which happens to be uh, 75 kilos, um, on the center. What you do is you put all your weight on it until you can deflect it until it just barely touches a flat surface, whether it be a picnic table or this desk or whatever. And then the softer shafts, well actually you slide the bridge together and, and with all my weight can touch in the middle where a stiffer shaft you have to slide it all the way out here for example this one to get it to barely touch the table so the stiffer the shaft the bigger the bridge the softer like our fiberglass shafts you can slide that bridge in about 30 inches put all my body weight on there and it will just barely touch the surface so imagine you, you had a softer one you put on there and it bends and touches the table and so on um, that being said um, comes to another thing. You know, people wonder, you know, how do our, our shafts break? Um, or how would a shaft break? We don't get many shaft failures, but when we do, most likely what happens is there's an impact of some type. Um, we do all of our testing in-house um, on all of our shafts, and um, most all of them will take well over 300 to 400 pounds when we do a, um, our um, failure test, um, which is, um, you know, at about a 40-inch bridge, um, you know, three to four hundred pounds um, or more um, are required to break the shaft. So most people are never going to pull that hard on the pedal shaft. So the way they break is carbon fiber um, is super strong, super stiff. However, you impact it, crack it, you know, say you wipe out in the surf and then the fin, the board goes over the, the paddle and the, the fin hits it, it's going to make an impact crack to that. Then when you go out for your next, you know, wave and go to dig hard to catch a wave, the paddle can sometimes snap. And, um, and they'll sometimes snap up high, sometimes down low, it depends on where the impact was. Um, some of the damage, I think, happens in transit because uh, when people call and they break their paddle, if we talk them through it, a lot of times they'll, oh, I just got to Hawaii, it was my first day out and I was really bummed or I flew to Fiji and, you know, it was the first day, I don't know what happened. Most likely the airlines um, did something, I don't know if you've seen how they handle bags, but uh, it can be pretty brutal. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, what will happen is uh, you'll have an impact uh, structural, um, uh, compromise the integrity of the, of the structure to where you'll get a, um, when you load a round tube, the cross sections want to ovalize when put under a load, because one side's on compression, one side's on tension, just like an I-beam, it puts a load in the middle, and the, the cross sections want to ovalize. So some material is required to keep it in what I call hoop strength, or some tube manufacturers would call that hoop strength. And if that's compromised, the shaft can buckle and collapse like the straw wheel if I overload it. See how it just buckled right there? What's happening is so much pressure is being put on the, on the compressive side that it collapses to the inside, buckles, and that's where you get sometimes this gnarly looking break when the paddle actually breaks in half. 
So, um, but that will not happen just paddling with it. I mean, it just can't, um, no matter how strong you are. Um, we did some tests with some pretty big strong guys like Rob Rojas and some guys, and the amount of pressure that's on the blade is actually about 40 pounds um, when you're paddling. You know, once the board is up to speed after a start, um, you know, you're really just applying constant pressure on that blade. Um, and that being said, no matter how hard you're pulling on the bottom hand, a lot of people say, how much are you pushing on the top hand versus pulling on the bottom hand? Well, if you do basic physics, if you pull 100 pounds with your pulling hand, you're going to have 50 pounds on the blade and 50 pounds on your pushing hand um, of pressure. And um, when you put the paddle in, the pressure on the top hand is actually down, pushing the paddle in. And once the blade is buried at its full depth, the pressure on the handle is just sort of holding it there while you pull from the bottom as you're going past the paddle blade. So there's much more pressure on the pull than there ever is, you know, pushing. And I don't like to think of pushing with the top hand. You want to think more of holding. So in the beginning of the stroke, you're pushing down to set it in. And at that point, you're holding pressure there as you're basically pulling with the bottom hand. So um, you want the most pressure on the blade at mid-stroke. And that's why you'll see in um, pictures when we analyze the stroke, the, um, you want the most power being applied when the paddle is straight up and down. So the, the motion at the beginning is down, set the blade, and then you're accelerating past it. And then while you're trying to get your body mass going forward is when you exit and try and keep the board running in between strokes. So that's lunch with Jimmy, a little bit about shafts, how they break, and uh, how we measure our stiffness, not our softness or rebound or reflection, whatever you want to call it. It's, um, it's a shaft stiffness index. So you'll see on all of our shafts down here, a little label says SSI. The SSI number is the shaft stiffness and not to be confused with the blade area. So our blades, um, as this blades get bigger from a small blade, and, and this would be like the flyweight on up to the uh, Big Mama Kalama, for example. We're measuring blade area in square inches, shaft stiffness in stiffness. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, second segment of uh, Lunch with Jimmy. <laughs> now i got to get back to work. Talk to you later.